Good evening, everyone. I call this uh, September 19th Development Review Board meeting to order. Um, I'd like to start by introducing our members, uh, starting at my right. Karen Allen, Vice Chair. Kevin O'Connell. Meredith Crandall, Staff. Rob Goodwin, Chair. Captain Burgess. Joe Kiernan. Uh, Michael Lazorczyk. And I'm Michael Lazorczyk, remote. Thanks. And then uh, Jean Leon. Jean Leon, hi, everyone. Remote. Perfect. Okay. At this time, Meredith is going to do a brief overview of our remote meeting procedures um, before we get to going. Yeah. And, you know, people we actually have on remote night now are Michael and Jean. So this isn't really for them because they know the spiel by now. Um, but anybody that we have on via Orca Media is watching this. Um, this is give you a little information in case you want to participate in tonight's meeting. Um, if you want to do so and be involved in tonight's development review board meeting, you can type this link here into your Zoom platform or into your web browser, and it'll bring you right into the Zoom platform. Um, and I will see you wanting to come in and let you into the meeting. And then you can, um, we can see you, you can talk to us, we can talk to you, it'll be great. Um, other alternative is to dial into this phone number and when prompted, put in the meeting ID um, and then you'll be able to at least talk to us, um, but you won't be zoomed in over the video. If you're trying to access the meeting and you're having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, if somebody does log in who is not on right now, um, please know that turning on your video is optional, and we do ask that everybody re keep their microphones on mute when they're not talking. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'm now going to hand the meeting back over to the chair. Hey, thank you, Meredith. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? No move. Motion by Kevin, uh, second by Sharon. Um, everyone's hey, aye, if you are approved. Aye. Aye. Okay. I hear two eyes on the Zoom platform. That is unanimously approved. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so um, I guess a couple brief comments this evening. Uh, one thing I just forgotten uh, to bring up at other you know meetings that remind folks that we usually at the beginning of the meeting um, just if anyone has, uh, you know, made a site visit to the site or has any, uh, you know, information that they wish us to review uh, as far as any con potential conflicts or anything like that. Um, but I think it's helpful to let folks know if you've been to the site or not. So we know if you have additional information that might be helpful. And uh, other than that, I have, don't have anything else. Um, I would now move on to a motion to approve the minutes for 9-6-2022. Does anyone have any comments on that for a motion motion by sharon a second second by joe all those in favor say aye aye, aye. it's uh unanimously including two votes on our zoom platform okay minutes for september 6th are approved um okay brings us to our first order of business to this evening, which would be an application for 23 Pleasant View Street. Um, and are you David? I'm David. Okay, so if you wanna come up and sit in front of the, the laptop there and make sure you're speaking into the microphone so that way both people remotely can hear you and um, the recording picks you up so that our minute taker can Excellent. do the minutes afterwards. So I'm David McVicker, resident of 23 Pleasant View Street. Perfect. Thank you, David. So we're just going to swear you in real quick for your testimony this evening, uh, and then uh, we'll get, get on to business. Um, so um, all those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? Um, 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and there are pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so I think to start things off, we're going to have Meredith give a brief overview of the application, um, and then uh, we'll let you sort of present and uh, sort of tell us what you're going to be proposing, and uh, then we'll kind of open it up to questions and try and keep it a little informal. Um, so, uh, as summarized in the staff report, this application is before the board because as zoning administrator, I don't have the authority to approve a second driveway on parcels unless they're on the corner. I mean, this is not a corner parcel. So, um, as we've seen in some other situations, the existing driveway seems to be hemmed in both by um, slopes as well as mature trees. And so the applicant needs some additional parking um, and is proposing to create a second driveway that's really just to a parking spot um, on one of the really the flatter areas that can be accessed from the road. Um, and so there's not, you know, there's not a lot of red in here. The, the key thing is that I can't approve it. So the board has to take a look at the factors um, allowed for when when approving a second residential driveway. And that's what I've got. <laughs> Have any questions for Meredith before we move to the applicant's presentation? All right. All right. Um, so basically, like she said, we're asking for a second parking spot on our property. Um, Pleasant View Street's getting repaved like within a week or two, I believe, if schedule goes right. And the spot we're looking at, we currently do park there already when we need the additional parking spot when friends and family are there. Um, we also have two teenage girls that are just about ready to get their license in another month, which is going to create another vehicle for us. Um, and with the repaving done, we're really looking for this spot to not have a curve that within that one section, and then eventually we'll put some gravel down underneath. I don't, you don't need to know this, but underneath the, that area, when we rebuilt the house 11 years ago, um, there was already a hard, not hard pack, but stone put down under the soil for trucks to get in back. So it is a solid spot already. Um, in essence, we're really just looking just, what is it, just, south of our current driveway to have a curbed area not without a curb and put in another parking spot instead of parking on the street which that i don't know if you've been down pleasant view street at times it can be pretty narrow um and we're looking to go south of south of it because Right next to our driveway, there's an ideal spot, but there is a telephone pole there. And if our neighbors are pulling in and out of their driveway, it would actually kind of almost um, be in their way a little bit at that time. Yeah, so we're looking to go up past that. Were you able to get a copy of the staff report and review some of the comments? No, no I did not. Yeah. I'm sorry, I probably would have had access to it, but. Yeah. No, it's I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. And you don't have to, but it gives you an idea of where they're going to be asking questions. So okay. Just pulled it up to some of the early part. Thank you. Um. So I guess. Just to more general information mm -hmm. about the project here, did you, so as far as like, you know, alternatives, you know, additional parking spot, that's your goal here. Um, did you consider, you know, any other, any other options or was this it? That's not saying that uh, <laughs> I have any idea of anything better, just to, for more context here. Did we look at a different op option? Yeah. I'm going to say no, other than considered north of the driveway. But we would have had to remove a retaining wall. Yep. There is the um, um, the water main to the property is yep. behind that wall. So that would have had to have been cut down lower to be in, out of the way at that time. Um, and where we're proposing it, that 
Pleasant View is a little bit slope, but this one spot is actually flat at that up above where we are. So it's an easier spot without having to deal with any slope of the property right. in terms of a driveway. Okay. Um, and so, so there's a couple comments in the staff report, one a little bit of back and forth with mm -hmm. the, um, the city about the angle of the parking spot. I don't know if it was a concern. It's just to um, needing to sort of specify exactly what angle the why it looks like it's angled a little bit. No, yeah. so, it's, so this is something. Sorry, yeah. I didn't call this one out to you, but it's in the staff report. Um, the Department of Public Works is a, a V trans standard that flows down where how the driveway meets the road so perpendicular can't be, at, yeah, can't be at an angle of less than 60 degrees so you might need to you'll need to measure that angle right. on the inside triangle yeah. and then maybe realign it so it is at less than 60 it's degrees. more than six so it's more 60 degrees, degrees or more it can't be less than 60 degrees at the narrow do you see what i mean yes because this is because right so that's 90 yep. degrees yep so that part here where yep. it can't be less than 60 um, yeah, it, it, the, it could be arranged that way easily. Um, I'm just also trying to avoid a tree that's already there, not having to take out but at that point. That's likely that we could, you know, put, put a condition in there that you know just yeah. to I attention to that. Don't foresee it being that angle that you're referring to concurrently. It was just it was something yep. that was flagged by Department of Public Works because we didn't actually have the angle noted yep. on the site plan. They just want to make sure it's 60 degrees or more as the angle where the driveway comes off the road. To the road. Right. right. Where it meets. Okay. So is this supposed to proposing one additional single parking spot? Yes, one additional parking spot at that time. No no more than that. Okay. Um, and the you need the twenty feet width as for, to. Account. I just guess twenty feet. Looking at a okay. neighbor's driveway, it doesn't need to be that wide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but but uh, listening to the angle, I didn't realize the angle was an issue. But I was thinking more of an angle coming when you're coming up the street to turn into the parking spot, um, and then backing out. Um, thinking the little wider at that spot would have made that easier to get into. But if there has to be less than 60 degree angle. Well, we could always condition it on the DPW, Perfect. an applicant coming to coming up with a specific plan that meets the VTRAN standards. Because right. mm -hmm. they have it. Actually, the, the center line of the driveway. So I, I work for VTRANS. I actually drafted the B71 standard for residential <laughs> drives. So it's the center line of the driveway. And then typically a driveway would have radiuses on yep. the corners. And yep. that's how you're able to get in on the sharper angle. Okay. Easier instead of just making the driveway wider, make the driveway narrow and add right. an apron angle, you know, a radius there. And but that what I'm looking for is the curb not to be there. So then right. you would still need that 20 feet. Yes. To to the the driveway would not have to be twenty feet wide. No, wide. the driveway would not, but the opening would be correct between twelve correct. and twenty four feet wide. So, Mayor, so you're saying there's a there's additional curb cut permit that goes to, um, sort of. There's not a curb there right now. <laughs> so there is a is, curb there right now. Uh, or maybe it's okay. Maybe it's yeah, with whatever they're putting in new is going to be there anyway. Okay. Yes, there will be an additional Department of Public Works construction and access permit that's part of the, what we call the curb cut permit that he'll need to get. Yeah. So yes, this could be conditioned on the final design okay. being per that permit. So instead of the angle specific conditions. Board members are updating moving forward on the technical details. I think <laughs> that we can, uh, you know, sort of discuss and uh, push those off to the public works review and whatnot and uh, move on to the other items of this. Yeah, there's there's nothing about this site that would stop you from putting in a compliant driveway, I don't think. It seems perfect. Perfect. fine. I there is a curb here now. Yeah. Just, yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm working on lots of different driveway <laughs> issues right now. <laughs> this is the the first of like three. Um, so 
I guess, Meredith, this question is actually for, you know, for, for you. So this is a single family home. Yep. Um, and the minimum parking requirement for a single family home is one spot. Typically, yes. Yes. Um, and that, can you refresh us on the maximum parking requirement? <laughs> so, and this is something that's, I sort of, I think I, in this one, I tried to lay out in the staff yeah. report. So in the regulations, there is a maximum number of off-street parking spaces that a zoning administrator can approve um, before it has to go to the DRB to get those extra parking spaces. And so that's typically double the minimum. <laughs> However, if you look at that language in conjunction with the fact that residential parking is allowed, quote, in any residential parking, par in any residential driveway, and that there is an authorization to allow uh, stacked parking for residential units, there's some conflict there. Mm -hmm. And in discussing with the planning director who was part of drafting these regulations, he said that there was no intent to limit the depth of someone's driveway, especially for single and two family homes to just one parking, You know, right. to be able to just put one car in there. Of course, they're gonna have guests. They're gonna have, they're gonna need more than just that one little space for homes and trying to mandate the length of someone's driveway really isn't what we're talking about. Um, you know, there's a requirement in here for making sure your driveway is long enough to avoid queuing. Again, that's more for commercial. So, and we, we've dealt with this before where the board has authorized more than two sparking spaces quote for a residential home if you just measured out the length of the driveway that's not that's not what we're supposed to be doing right. um, and mike and i've actually talked about amending mm -hmm. the regs in the next next go around to make this explicit he was like oh isn't that clearly implied and we're like no <laughs> we don't do implied anymore mike <laughs> it needs to be explicit because otherwise somebody's going to come and poke holes in it but for these purposes, it's because there's clearly that conflict, the board can authorize the second driveway without running into that maximum parking space issue. Right. Because if you look at the holistic aspect, right. it's allowed. Uh, so I guess one thing we're under consideration here is, you know, on street parking and the limitations and how that impacts your need for a extra parking space. Um, so I saw here in the staff report that it was mentioned that Pleasant Street, at least in the winter months, is restricted parking. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a factor. Um, board members have any other things to add about this general idea of an additional parking spot? It is also I rob. Yes, I've done a site visit, and, and that's in my district. I'm very familiar with that. Okay, and um, it is in very narrow. I mean, it makes sense for the applicant to, uh, you know, want to extend, expand on on his driveway, his parking necessities. Once you know, w when people do park on that street, on the, the actual street, it does cause significant amount of congestion. This would help definitely alleviate such congestion. It's a really narrow street, and ter and I'm glad that the city's finally uh, uh, going to repave it because it's uh, it's been in bad shape for years. That's all I wanted to comment. All right, thank you, Gene. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess the, we talked about the sixty degree angle um, in the specifics and of the technical details um i guess i'm still a little bit hung up on the 20 the 20 feet for one parking spot which is that has to do with the angle um or is that it, it i'm not concerned about a 20 foot wide continuous driveway as long yeah. as it's wide enough for the one vehicle to park right. my concern is 
making sure that the curb is not so narrow that you're still driving over the curb going in and out of this driveway. Yeah, that's why. Right. That is my concern. And if if it's an yeah. if it's a arc coming in and out, then yeah. the twenty feet I is. I that was an estimate off of another driveway down the road in terms of a single lane driveway that mm -hmm. I was looking at is where they had the curb cut. That's where I measured that from. It does not need to be the continuous driveway 20 feet wide. I guess maybe to, to guide the discussion for the board, you know, some context here, I, I'm inclined that to say that this is, you know, okay, but I think for discussion, uh, if come time the next meeting, we have five extra permits for additional parking spaces for driveways on, you know, Pleasant Street, uh, you know, that would be a different situation than, you know, than one, you know, than one driveway. Um, so I guess just taking a step back and making sure that we dot our T's and cross our I's to make sure that we're not setting a precedent here to just say that, like, everybody gets an additional driveway in there because of present street is narrow and there's no, you know, on street parking, not to say that this applicant isn't, you know, perfectly reasonable. I just want to make sure that we discuss that in that context. And I'm fully supportive of that, but I do just want to, yep. uh, for the sake of the record, uh, we're dealing with pleasant view street yes. rather than pleasant street. Pleasant view street. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a different location and different yep. set of conditions. And there is a pleasant street. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a 23 pleasant view, as I found out. So pleasant, pleasant view is what we're uh, okay. reviewing. Uh, I guess for the sake of discussion, looking at it from my point of view, you already parked there, right? We do park there at and times, yes. Then there's nothing to stop us from parking on his lawn, right? Yep. So uh, I'm basically asking for when we put the curb in, not to have this curb put in, right? When yep. the construction happens, and with the construction happening soon. You know, this, yeah, it's not going to change operationally anything that's going on. Um, they're already parking there. They're already pulling in and out of there. And we, you know, there's nothing town is going to do about that. So it's not changing anything other than, I guess, what is the word? Memorializing the or cementing the literally the the yeah. space. So I think this was before you joined the board, or maybe just as you joined the board, we did have a situation where we had a multi-unit residential situation where people were parking somewhere they shouldn't be parking, where it was into the public right-of-way. So there are instances where zoning is going to come down and say, you can't park there. Um, that was also a situation where there were enough residential units that it triggered site plan review, which has a little more teeth to it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also they were in the public right of way. So that that was a situation where we did say you can't park there anymore um, and made them actually put up a fairly high granite curb. Um, but this is a different situation. For sure. The other thing I wondered about is you did say that this um, that he's going to have to get a uh, curb cut permit from the DPW. Right. So that's also unlike another sort of set of protections, even if five more parties show up with it you know that if we're going to be chomping away at the curbs that we can there'll be some slowing down there too so yeah. and they'll they'll make sure that the final design of the curb cut the width of that and angles all meets up with the v-trans standards as they build it um and then you know if the board wants to put a maximum width on the interior part of the driveway they could but i think it's also if they're good with the up to amount that's on here it's sort of how you how you want to go with that which is why i raised that as a potential issue yeah. potential point so just to summarize here i i have us up to 20 feet a condition of the curb cut width up to 20 feet an angle of um you know meeting the b trend standards and we're conditioning it to have that dealt with with a you know in the curb cut permit process with public works um and that the board seems to think that the multitude of factors that we've discussed um make a additional driveway um permissive um and i feel okay with that if there, anyone has a motion i have one question yes. um since dpw is doing the paving through here have they considered you want to put in like sure pack or something some kind of gravel Eventually, yes, yeah, some gravel in that spot. 
after the probably won't happen until next spring or next summer but okay because usually for a gravel drive there'd be five feet for v-trans five feet worth of pavement apron that comes in off the roadway um uh, and it may be smart to coordinate that while the paving project is going through that's what used to be. they they shifted this all came to planning through dpw okay so um i think that that's i'll make sure i talk to them downstairs about it okay um because you know it's the the city part they can go in on the city part before we actually get the decision out okay because that's their dpw part of their their paving project and um, then just you know his part would be the gravel afterwards so i can definitely talk to them about that okay thank you joe um and is there a reason you want to go at 20 feet just because he said 20 feet or do we want to just leave it up to the standard where the maximum is 24 feet uh, I'm not. I, <laughs> I'm not <in> okay <laughs> I mean, I think that they were, I think 20 feet was probably going to be more than sufficient for yeah, DPW probably, but. for one, you know, one residential drive, but yeah, you could do. Okay. Um, I guess I could make a motion then, a motion to grant approval for the construction of a second driveway at 23 Pleasant View Street as prevent, presented an application Z-2022-0105 supporting supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval. The new driveway meets the standards, uh, the V-Trans standards, V-71 for residential drives and approval by DBW. Motion by Joe, sounds good. Second by Sharon. Um, okay, start the roll from my right. Sharon, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Joe? Yes. Abby? Yes. Michael? Yes. Jean? Yes. Rob votes yes. Eight. Okay. Eight, right? Yeah, that's eight. Yes. <laughs> so. Next step is the the DPW. yeah the DPW yeah. permit yeah. that I need to get in touch. Yeah, with. and so what's going to happen for the so yes, I will verbally let them know that we've this has all happened. Mm -hmm. There is a DRB written decision that has to come out and be processed before we can actually issue the zoning permit. Yep. Um, but your your construction part of the zoning permit is the gravel, which you're not intending to do right away anyway. So DPW can can move on to to their their work, um, and I'll talk to them about that five foot. I may also just email around so that you're copied on that. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice Thank day. you. Jenny or Jennifer? Jenny and. John. Same spiel from what? Two hours ago. Come on up. <laughs> Come up. Sit in front of the microphone. Oh, you gave him the microphone. Give me the microphone seat again, huh? <laughs> so you both want to introduce yourself real quick and then we can spur you in since you weren't weren't here for the prior. I'm Jenny Sheehan. Sean Sheehan, Five West Street. Um, so those interested in providing testimony in this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. So, Meredith, go ahead and give us a brief overview. Okay. So, we're going to be going back to the minimum parking requirements. <laughs> um, so, as we said before, minimum parking requirements for dwelling units, and it applies to accessory dwelling units as well, is at least one off-street parking space. Um, this application came before the board previously, although the board didn't make an official decision, um, because they came before the board to put in a second driveway they are corner parcels, so typically I would be able to approve that, but their original applied for design 
the driveway was going to be too close to the um, corner, to the intersection between the that whole process and actually getting to the meeting and discussions with Department of Public Works, they shifted it. So the board didn't actually make an official decision on that application. We just ended up administratively approving it. So it was like remanded back to our office. Um, since then, uh, we now have a situation where they don't want to build that second driveway anymore. Um, they have one off street parking space that's in a garage that garage is so close to the street that there's not actually room for a standard sized vehicle parking space between the front of the garage and the road. Um, so they're asking for a waiver of one parking space so that the accessory dwelling unit wouldn't have an off street parking space. Um, and that's just, that's not something I'm allowed to approve. So I've laid out some things in here for the board to consider. Um, and I think one of the one of the key things is there's very specific criteria that the board is supposed to consider when looking at waiving the minimum parking standards. Um, and one of those is drafted to really only apply to, to commercial situations where you have a business and apply, uh, providing um, secure bicycle storage for employees and with the city's push for walkable, bikeable downtowns and all of that, and a discussion I had with the planning director, we really feel like that's excessively narrow. Um, plan is to try and tweak that, but he also really didn't feel like that's what was intended when it, this original passage was happening. And that, you know, it, it, it's not especially if there's some other factors that come into play, like the types of um, you know, public transit, things that are available, having a factor of there is secure bicycle storage, even though it's a residential situation, right? Bicycle storage for your tenants. That's not something that, that, that is something that the board can consider. Um, whether or not there's enough factors here for the board to waive that parking space in this particular, you know, particular situation is, up to you, but I tried to lay out all those different factors. We'll just review what those are. So you're talking about the factors for um, it's 3011C. Yes. And um. So they are that. Um. Well, I didn't list all of them in here in the staff report. Give me a second. Yeah. If you're asking me to actually cite it, oh, there's some extras. <sighs> Didn't come into play, so I didn't put them in the staff report. Pretty sure. Um, so you have, sorry, access is a really long section. So um, the board may waive some or all off street parking requirements to the extent that the applicant submits a parking study demonstrating that less parking will be needed. And these are all ORs. The applicant meets the requirements for shared parking. So that's off-street parking on somebody else's parcel. There is adequate on-street or public parking available when within 1,000 feet of the proposed development to meet all or a portion of the demand. There is an existing or proposed public transit stop within a quarter mile of the proposed development. Or the proposed development shall provide secure enclosed bicycle storage and shower facilities for employees who bicycle, jog, or walk to work. Now, clearly, parking studies, shared parking, those don't apply. Um, and we aren't really looking, you know, there's, there is some on-street parking. There is the current version of a public transit stop nearby, um, you know, and you have, you have our, our current, you know, we don't really have the Montpelier commuter at this point, but there are, right now I can't think of, I wrote it in the stuff. Yeah, there's the my right option, which is very similar to public transit and it's not going to be just like an Uber where you call and it shows up right away. It's you're, you're going to have to coordinate. Um, but that is a public transit. And then, you know, it's not for employees, it's for residents, but they're proposing secure bicycle storage, but those are the factors. Right, thank you. I think that that's a good focus here. So you guys want to give a little presentation on your project here. And Sorry, uh, that was long. <laughs> sure. All right. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think, I mean, in addition to what Aaron said, that's the big 
uh, the big piece of it. I think the kind of the background for it is when we moved in just just before the start of the the pandemic. Sorry, get closer to the microphone here, and um, and uh, and we're you know planned on moving in. I think the turning that garage, the workshop space over the, the garage into the into an ADU was the main thing. I think that got us started on that um, that project, which ended up being more of a project than we <laughs> maybe bit off as they always tend to, maybe particularly during pandemic and so forth. Um, but in the process of it, that was what brought us to, I think, as you referenced to originally re uh, put in the request for the, um, you know, for the, for the driveway based on seemed like that was, you know, was a normal way of, of doing things. And then in the process of building the ADU and talking to neighbors saying, Oh, it'd be a, be a shame if you put in a driveway and in, into the garden there and so forth they said well you know we have to that's the requirement and, and so well actually it's you know there are with the waivers for it and i think that's when we had the conversation looked at the details of the waivers and i think particularly looking at that standpoint as well of thinking that originally we we're thinking of renting out the kind of the whole building there garage um and apartment but obviously it's, you know for for affordability and obviously that being a big piece too if you're just renting out the space above and seeing a lot of people particularly looking for downtown walking you see on front porch forum people you know looking for something walking saying they don't have a, a car and so forth having a studio apartment that that isn't required to have the whole garage with us have it retain the garage have it be shared garage space being just a one car garage but being ample room as you mentioned to have bicycle storage or have other things that um tenant could have in there as shared storage seemed to make a lot of sense. So that kind of brought us back around um, to the decision to to submit uh, to submit the waiver. So I'm happy to go into more details, but not unless there's anything you want to, to miss. I think as we noted, in addition, as you said, the secure bicycle storage, the parking, I mean, being a corner lot, you're obviously going to have more more parking than something that's not a not a corner lot. Um, and, you know, with being walking distance to to downtown, having that high high walkability and bikeability um, score on on the Walk Score website and um, in the web and and as you mentioned with the My Ride, um, but also the St. J bus comes up that way. And I think Jenny printed out a couple of the other bus maps that um, go through the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, is the unit currently occupied? No, no, just just finishing it up. It has, so it hasn't it doesn't have that history yet. It hasn't been occupied yet. Okay. Correct. Let's make sure I understand. Is the entire garage having been made over, or is there still one parking spot in the garage? Yeah, there's still the parking one parking. Okay, spot Okay, so in there's the still one spot, That's and then there, yeah. the idea is that's a tenant. There's been in some built over the garage. So there'd be a tenant there, and there'd be some storage room or bikes or whatever for yeah, the tenant. Yeah, exactly. But it's a but it'll be a one but we car. Would, we would retain the parking spot in the garage, but the okay. garage it's, space would be shared space where they would be okay. able to keep a bicycles and other other gear. So the existing parking on. Um... The on street parking. Is there on street parking on both streets, West Street and First Ave? Um, yes, on on West Street, it's um, in the summer. It's just on the uh, the College Green side of the of the street, and then mm -hmm. in winter, it it alternates like, like okay. the city does. And then on on First Ave, uh, the part abutting our property, we have uh, the city gives us um, permits to permits for two two spaces oh. um there it's it's uh yeah, permanent permanent parking on the stretch um oh. of, of first ave abutting our property i'm not sure why or the rationale behind <laughs> it but when we when we didn't have them up the city parking came back <laughs> yeah, streets in that a city that have no i would parking i wasn't aware of that at all that's so how does that play into I, mean, I feel like there's no permit parking in Montpelier, so yeah, I, I have, I honestly have no idea. And you didn't put that in your application, yeah. otherwise I would have been like, so, wait, yeah. that, highlight. <laughs> they have one car and two on-street permit parking. That's... I think they asked us how many we need. I mean, there's space for about six cars along that mm -hmm. stretch up there from our driveway and up. There's usually nobody parking there. I mean, we've yeah. had neighbors ask, you know, they could park and. I said, fine with us if the, the city isn't. We we didn't have the permits in our 
<laughs> probably for the first <laughs> year. <laughs> you came and said you need the permit oh. and here's the permits. I'm not sure though. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. They're uh, students. Right. They yeah. they park alongside our house. And then I, I wanted to share too, just the history, a piece back on the history was that we put in the proposal for the driveway because we thought we had to have it mm -hmm. to meet the regulations of having a um, another unit, but we were concerned about aesthetically in the town and how that would look too along the, that street to, to have cars like in front of the house. So that was, that's part of the reason not to have a driveway or that we're hoping for a waiver. Yeah, that is one of the like locational standards is that if you were just building like a parking lot for something, you wouldn't put it between the street and the front of the house. Typically a driveway is a little different, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't think we have to paint it down specifically. We sort of have a totality of, uh, of criteria here under, um, Section 3011, Part C. Um, board members get to think about that list and information in the application there. To, um, I can kind of go through here. Um, yes. So, Meredith, this is for you. If, so, if we do grant a waiver in this instance, there's nothing that's preventing them from going back and and building, uh, constructing the driveway if that's needed in the future. Uh, well, I mean, there's the life of the permit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, within within the life of the permit. The but, life of the permit they already received. Right. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. This And this won't extend that time period of that prior permit. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Abby, is, is your question, did you get the answer you, you looked for? Because I, the way I heard that, it was that, so we grant, theoretically, uh, the uh, one parking space permit, can they come back at five years and undo it? Or yeah. a yeah. new owner undo it? Yeah. Well, yeah, they, I mean, they'd have, they'd have to, right, if they, they'd have to get a new permit, right? So if somebody now wants to add a second driveway to get the second off-street parking space, they'd have to come back for a new permit. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's way right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if they if they find that this really isn't working, they lose the on street permits, something like that, they would need to come back and get a new permit for whether it's a second driveway or some weird expansion of what they have there, which would be really, really difficult. Um, they would need either a permit, an administrative permit or a permit from you, depending on what the actual layout was. Yeah. But I mean, so, what they got before was pretty much the only space they could put a new off-street parking space without. I don't question about the permitted parking, which also I had no clue about. Um, so you guys have two permits for two vehicles to park on the street on First Ave there? They asked Sean uh, how they parked. And they just gave you two permits? <laughs> yeah, they just gave us. <laughs> so, we, does that allow you to park through the winter there? Um, well, on the on the alternating days. Okay. So it's right. so uh, that's the uh, even yeah, that's the even side of the street. So even number days okay. we could park there, but we couldn't park there with the parking permit on the odd number day. Okay, because it's only on your side of the street. Um. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. The other side is the door. Oh, wait. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I have no. Yeah. I'd never heard about these. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I have no idea either. Uh, I was just wondering if a potential tenant could just get a permit also <laughs> on the street there. I mean, Your per personal question. I mean, just given the nature of this. Oh, oh, if, oh. If that was something that was available to them, that makes it a lot easier to okay a accessory dwelling unit that doesn't have a parking spot if i mean yeah. this brand new concept to me that we have permitted parking in montpelier i had no idea um I, I i honestly have never heard about it but as far as like the board is concerned i mean it, it makes it a little easier to make that decision mm -hmm. knowing that that's an option for a potential tenant 
Right, right. But they, the yeah. the permit would be to the tenant, you know. So yeah, I'm right. assuming they walk in and they ask him how many cars they have. They say one, and they just get one permit. Sounds like so. There's a sign that says permitted parking only by by there too. Hmm. Okay. Go up there just Maybe to... it's because um, our home used to be part of the college, and the per... no, that wouldn't be it. I don't. I... No, I bet that has something to do with it. When there were more kids going there, and just to make sure that there are spots for people traveling into school, that's probably what it's for. But now that the college is essentially mm -hmm. has no one coming to it, um, mm -hmm. now they have all this permitted parking that's just available, so they will hand them out to anyone who asks. <laughs> Got a question. I'm newer. I'm not sure if um, this is an appropriate question. But I was curious whether you thought about uh, for advertising the tenancy. You know, whether you will explicitly note that there is no parking space. You know, uh, you know beyond the you know there's a advertising the apartment as an apartment with the ability to get that on street parking, or there's just advertising the apartment as an apartment, and that's it's an ADU with you know it is for a resident without a car or for someone who is you know looking for that walkability maybe they you know have other means of getting where they need to go when it's a regional yeah we haven't thought of the exact listing of yeah. what we'd say in there but what we did that we'd focus on what we were renting out which is the you know the, the studio apartment and shared garage space not not including parking yeah. for a car but including parking for storage for a bike and so forth um we hadn't thought ahead of would we, whether we would just say about parking around or assume yeah. i think a comment for the record too is there's a lot of other uses for adu aside from a tenant you know like granny flat uh child care you know there are many uses in which uh you know someone might in fact be a member of uh the extended family or whatever else and not um necessarily be requiring their own car so anyway just comment for the record not necessarily your situation yeah and there is one space for our car so the tenant yeah. could potentially have that space in the garage if you were to give it out to them so then you would have nowhere to park though in we the garage in oh, you, park. <laughs> <laughs> you park on the generally street. listings would advertise if there's off street yeah. parking so the absence of that would they would figure it out, I'm sure. Yeah. It's also a question that yeah. potential well, pot tenants ask. Yeah. It's a potentially more affordable unit if it's yeah. not coming with the parking space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Right. Huh. Sorry, I'm just looking, looking at, at the park I'm park I'm park. looking I'm looking at the interactive downtown public parking map and I'm not seeing anything about first Ave and permits or anything. Interesting. I'm gonna have some questions. I have lots of questions for DPW after tonight's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll change it now. I, I don't think they're going to change that anytime soon. Okay. okay, so we've um in our criteria here under uh, 311C, we've discussed um on street um or public parking within a thousand feet of the development, um, which is the you know the, the property that we're discussing tonight. Um like the public transit stop um within a quarter mile. Um we've discussed that some. Um, the bicycle storage in the garage, um, which is says employees, but I think that it's reasonable here to, um, you know, translate that over to using our criteria. And um, then there were some other criteria that um, maybe are applicable, but I feel like I have the information I need. Um, how do board members feel? I guess I have one last question, mostly for Meredith. Would they be able to put a business in there if they so? Um, so that's a whole nother change of use permit and we reevaluate parking again at that time because commercial right if it's a home business where nobody shows up that's one thing if it's a business where people show up you have to have more parking it's a, yeah. and it's a ratio based on the amount of square footage used in the space for the business multiplied by the frequency of customers i just wanted to make sure that we weren't blanket saying if it was like a uh, this is, studio this, or something no, you had this is for this there. residential use okay great that's uh answers my question yeah. i feel like um they've met the burden of showing sufficient alternatives yeah. what Make a motion. oh 
Hold on one second. No, I heard it. Hold on. issues we have not discussed. No, <laughs> I think you guys have hit it all. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, Joe wants me to make the motion. I'll make the motion. Uh, motion to approve the request to waive one required parking space at 5 West Street and to construct a new 100. What? So, so we didn't ever talk about that. We don't have to. It's okay. in the staff report. It's administrative <laughs> and design review, right? The whole, permit as a whole covers yeah. both of those things. We didn't talk about it. Okay. No. You didn't talk about it because there's absolutely it. nothing in there the board actually needs to make a decision on, but the permit has to cover everything. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, there was like a surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Motion to approve. That's we're here at 530. <laughs> acquired parking space at 5 West Street and to construct a new 192 square foot shed as presented in application Z 2022-0104 and supporting and supplemental materials. Seven. Motion by Abby, second by Kevin. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Okay. I, I would just say that I think this, uh, I mean, we, we're treading on new ground here, uh, but the applicant wants to forge ahead with a with a different concept, which I think is good. I think we should encourage that. Uh, there's nothing that we're voting on that would be irrevocable, uh, as per Abby's uh, question earlier. So I'm I'm in full support of this. Yeah, I think I think I'd like to just highlight on a couple things. I think that, um, yeah, there is this concept that. Maybe it's the concept Kevin's talking about about the idea of decoupling parking from a rental unit um, as you know some way. If you don't have a car, why would you be paying for a parking space? Um, and so, um, you know, I think that that's I don't know. It's a new concept that we have all sorts of parking issues in Montpelier. Why not try something new? And I think that this falls well within the bounds of our um, authority to give it give it a roll. Um, I I think that it's it's not specifically related to this application, but. I would flag concern. I know that in other municipalities, you know, talk about like, uh, you know, Airbnb and short tune rentals. Um, and that's not on this application, but I'm just going to, you know, throw it out there that um, in my mind, that would be a different story um, as far as us reviewing this application, even though that we don't have the short term rental uh, regulations in Montpelier, you know, yet. Um, right. But um, that's something that, you know, I did think about. Um, and um, yeah, no, we're working with the housing committee, and they do for long for long term, yeah, yeah for long term housing. Absolutely, um, thank you on, on that. Anyone else? Do, uh, yeah, on for the record, agree with your statement on kind of infill and walkability and decoupling housing from parking requirements. It should promote more affordability and uh, yeah, yeah, enable more people to enjoy a really great walkable downtown that we have. So, and I think one just general point, I'd uh, be interested to see how, you know, the longevity of my ride, you know, with, I think my ride right now is arguably more convenient than a transit station right. located within a catchment area of a, of a house, of a housing location. So, you know, but then I suppose there's some questions around the, um, yeah, frequency and all of that. So. Right. I'll call the roll unless anyone else has anything to add. Um, Sharon, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Um, Abby? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Catherine? <laughs> yes. Yes. Joe. Yep. And uh, uh, Michael? Yes. Gene? Yes. And uh, Rob votes yes. That's unanimously approved. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. So, Good luck with that. Same routine, written decision, and we'll be able to issue the written decision and the permit on the same day once it's the decision signed because there's no conditions. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, happy to do it. Our Don't next, pack up just yet. <laughs> our next, uh, our next meeting, Meredith. Uh, she does another roll. Hold on. Oh, yeah, oh. You take attendance. Yeah, well, I the attendance is fine, but next regular meeting. Monday, October 3rd. Anybody know that they're not going to be able to make it now? We do have applications. Yes, Monday, October 3rd. Or if you if you don't know off the top of your head, you can just email me. Um, and that's, yeah, the only other business that I've got. 
<laughs> Post it on the Tempty website. Look on the pending application yeah, page. I can't remember right now. It's my uh, oh no, I do. It's um demolition of chimneys on the roof of a historic building. Oh, oh yeah. didn't we already see that one? That no, the, uh, that was a different historic building. Then there, the agreement was they were going to rebuild them. This is actually complete demo. No plans to rebuild them at all. Is it a residence or a business? It could be either. Ultimately, it's you know, look on the pending applications page okay. on our website. Right. You can link to the original base application. Okay. I will uh, accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, uh, we need a second on that. <laughs> <laughs> Abby retroactively second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion by Joe, second by Abby. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Thanks Rob.